to have a laptop with administrator access so you're going to install okay. few of the tools and configure systems apart from that uh, we are also covering the cloud part which is very much in demand in the market and uh, the top notch public cloud is aws and entire our demo gonna be hosted in aws so that you will feel free in terms of how aws work what all the different services it provides and we also present the end to end kind of uh, demo and uh, entire our lab sessions entirely on aws okay so i'm okay with any everything uh, if you want me i can uh, use the local system as well where i might need you to install uh, uh, oracle and uh, vagrant and i can configure those file as well but uh, to be very effective this uh, sessions i would still suggest so let's start with aws and we're going to create a free account so no charge gone not associate to any one of you and uh, that want is would be like you will grab the very good uh, understanding of how aws works is that make sense to everyone yeah yes for sure sure great okay one second Okay, so before I start. Wi-Fi tells this... me that I am on. Wi-Fi that I am on. Sorry, that I am on. One point that you just said that I am. Sir, is there any prior knowledge is required for this? No. So that's the Suresh has already uh, told me that uh, candidates will be joining with uh, almost uh, without no understanding of DevOps. So this course has been designed in such a way. uh for basic and intermediate so you doesn't require any pre knowledge but yes if you are coming up with something called waterfall model agile model understanding this obviously gonna help you understanding how this works great okay 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 so let me know if i'm uh if see see i'm uh, before that i'll probably mention you how the course been designed so the course is not only designed in terms of uh, theoretical and giving you what the devops in the market i comes from entirely uh, developer background and this course is mostly designed in such a way that apart from the knowledge which you grabs what devops is what all the tools what all the multiple pillars it supports which we going to discuss it also been designed in mostly almost 90 to 95% of hands on so right. by end of that uh, you will mostly going to grab how devops world works what all the tools are there not even the tools how going to you orchestrate all the different tools is starting from code commit to code deployment going with a monitoring expect i'm going to discuss everything in detail no worries it's just a brief i'm giving you okay so let me first discuss about the outline and then i'll go to the ppt which i prepared okay sure so uh yes so first we will talk about kind of what is the devops overview and there we going to discuss about what is devops why devops and how devops will be implemented then we going to talk about all and directly we going to jump into all the multiple pillars of devops okay because you might have heard about agile model you might have heard about a waterfall model i'm going to discuss again back in detail down the line but devops is all about implementations okay so how do you implement all these tools in the real world so uh, this will cover setting of all this tool configuring this tool and your day to day uses of this tool right and i'm going to cover all the top notch tool uh i'm going to show you the periodic table that every pillar suppose i'm talking about source control this is one the starting you might have heard about right where all code goes and sits and there are tfs there are bit buckets there are github right so i'm going to cover few of them which are into the top level and the rank 1 and rank 2 then we will move into continuous integration tools like jenkins bamboo travis i mostly covered jenkins so these are just expect don't worry about this we going to discuss everything in detail then the third pillar comes how do you analyze your code so there are different code analysis tools where i'm going to deep dive into sonar cube which is uh, again open source and very effective in the market and most of the companies like tech mahindra most people e-commerce like amazon netflix so most of them they use it 
Then artifact storage, mm -hmm. I think you might have already heard about. Most of the project is using Nexus and Artifactory. There are mostly two in the market, and I'm going to cover both two in that. Okay. Then uh, next is a configuration management uh, and the deployment tool. Here I mostly cover Ansible. I have came across uh, most of the tool and I have used extensively in last six, seven years, Chef and Ansible both. So uh, I'll give you a great glimpse about uh, Chef and Ansible and uh, probably will pick up one tool. Uh, I'll suggest you, I'll give you the both pros and cons about both the tools and you guys can decide which one to deep dive into that. From Suresh and his understanding, he suggests Ansible. Even I would suggest Ansible, but I can anytime switch to any tools that upon your flexibility, right? Uh, then we gonna create an entire pipeline end to end, right? This is all the tools we discussed about, right? Uh, source control tool, code analysis tool, code management tool, deployment tool, integration tool, cloud tool, and then monitoring tools. We gonna create an entire CI CD terminology with a demo. First, I'll give you a demo. We gonna create the entire pipelines, which will Con concrete of all the different six, seven, or eight jobs. I'm gonna show you that. Then, usually we're gonna be using the AWS, right? So AWS, what is AWS? How do we structure as a code? Okay. So I'm gonna give you some demo in that as well. Okay. Uh, for that, we will again use Ansible. So this is all lab I'm talking about. So how do you uh, provision the entire infrastructure in cloud using code? Uh, so we're gonna use either one of them. So I would again suggest Ansible. Then how do we do continuous delivery using again one of the configuration tool called Ansible? And then few of them. Then lastly, we'll discuss about few of the monitoring tools. Again, monitoring comes with a multiple expect. So there is log monitoring, there is security monitoring, there is a application monitoring, and there is a uh, infrastructure monitoring sections. So I will cover one to two tools in all the different pillars so that you will get an idea about why this tool has been used and why DevOps or cloud engineer or any engineer down the line have this to be integrated in our day-to-day -day activity. Because as a DevOps engineer or as a, any cloud or a delivery engineer, your responsibility not only to manage the infrastructure and create the end-to-end -end automation, you will also land up having your responsibility that how you create flexible and scalable infrastructure which having less security prone and should be up all the time, right? But how do you do that? So with the help of all this monitoring tool, you make sure uh, your environment is all up to mark and we will also try to uh, manually give some error try to shut down some instances and see how it automatically brings up and makes your infrastructure all the time available right so this is quite a glimpse about uh, the entire uh, sessions we're gonna cover in probably 40 40 hours right uh, so It's good to go, Sushil. I mean, uh, once we got into that uh, architecture, we might have some questions. Uh, I think uh, for glance, it's okay. Great. Uh, please, uh, guys, let me know your name once you talk. So probably uh, one, two days, I'll try to uh, get your name and us, uh, your uh, uh, the way you speak. So I'll quickly try to grab you because I don't yeah, know Krishna who is again. speaking. Chris, now. Okay, great. Yeah, okay. So that would be great. So let me quickly start, guys. Uh, so uh, I'm happy that you guys gave your introduction uh, about Krishna and Lavanya for now. And a uh, little about myself, so I'm coming up with more than seven plus a year of experience. And these are more, mostly into infrastructure. I've started my career into infrastructure uh, automation engineer, and uh, it's been more than six years, seven years. I'm entirely working on DevOps when the DevOps came in picture. Uh, so I have been attended almost 60 to 70 plus DevOps uh, tools sessions 
across the world. Uh, I have got experience of three years working in U uh, UK and uh, I just came two years back, uh, two, two weeks back and I was in US. So uh, I cover most of the DevOps and the cloud uh, trainings and sessions now, nowadays. These are few of the tools uh, where I've got expertise in and uh, mostly certified in most of the tools which you see here. So uh, in terms of specialized into DevOps, which you want to take, uh, which will going to cover most of this tool in brief. Uh, but specifically, uh, I'll get a training in terms of Harshikop if you might not have heard. So this is all about creating your infrastructure as a code and how do you maintain uh, multiple clouds at one code configurations. So you heard about, you might have heard about Google Cloud. You might have heard about uh, Azure and now you already going to work with AWS. But how do you manage entire infrastructure in a multiple cloud? So there the Terraforms tool and the Harshikop, which you see here called Harshikop came in place. Ansible, we're going to cover. Jenkins, we're going to cover. Chef, I'll give you what. So basically Ansible and Chef is almost uh, uh, alternate to each other. The both are configuration management tools and uh, probably I'll talk about what the uh, language they are being written in, what all the modules both provides. So down the line, you will not feel anything that what is safe does and what is Ansible does and why they are different in the market. I'm going to talk each and everything about why Chef and why Ansible and what all the pros and cons about both these tools, right? Then we will cover about GitHub and all these variants like GitHub, Bitbucket. Uh, if time permits, I'm going to show you how the do we manage our code and sprint management using Jira as well. You might have heard about Jira, right? So I'm going to cover about that. So let's quickly uh, start about. Uh, so before that, uh, Suresh, are you there in the call? Yes, uh, Sushil, yep. Okay, Suresh. So uh, let me know uh, how do you want to drive this session? Do you want me to give a kind of uh, what all we covering a kind of demo what we are going to do or we can start up with uh, the few introduction about DevOps uh, who what they will take as part of the DevOps because I have got first 10 page of presentation about only DevOps mm -hmm. the tools then I have a demo scheduled. Uh, which is a recorded video and then there is a AWS account creation task for everyone which is the first requirement of directly jumping into the lab sessions so let okay. me know your views as well yeah sure 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 so whatever the plan is good enough I guess uh, so let us concentrate initially what what is a DevOps and why DevOps uh, that is very important after that uh, you can go to the uh, uh, specific topic and then uh, the practical one practical on sure. any tool. Okay. Yep. Great. Uh, Shushil, it would be uh, Sushil Krishna here. So it would be good if you can cover the architecture so that we'll have a vague idea as so on what are the tools and what is worth. That uh, I'll be covering in the yes. first. Yes, that will be covered page. as part of a DevOps overview, I guess. Am I right, Sushil? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So okay. I'm going to show you the architecture. I'm going to show you a uh, recorded video session which I have recorded just in the morning today so that the entire lab we're going to design and bring back that demo which I'm going to show you in the real world how do you implement right so you will aware about what we exactly going to cover in that lab, lab session so it will give you a quick glimpse about the entire lab and the 40 hours of session which we're going to do okay so let's quickly start with uh, probably the DevOps overview okay so why do DevOps probably uh, this is a, a glimpse and the only the point being uh, mentioned here throughout the other uh, down the line I'm gonna discuss in details so first about why do DevOps obviously most of you are aware about uh, it improves the deployment frequency right which can lead the faster time to the market right so when I'm talking about why DevOps, then you will get to know what is this point? How come our deployment frequency and the integration of core modules is faster? And how do we automate that task? I'm just uh, going through the points and we will deep drive each of the points which is mentioned here. OK, so obviously once we have the faster deployment ratio and the time we're going to uh, do the lesser failure rate and we're going to shorten the entire life cycle of the software development and a deployment process. 
so that's the main agenda of devops in process right and not only that uh, with devops being implemented it gives us the feature of rollback and going back to the previous version in case any failure has happened in the production environment so that is also a features which is being integrated into devops world and we will see how to implement that as well okay so what this course is all about as we have already gone through the content in detail it's all about how do it's define the ability to integrate the communication integration and automation in terms of how the devops tools and technologies creates the flow in the existing technology worlds right and it could be meant for any developers it operationals professionals bi's so that they will know whenever a project requirement comes in place how to understand that project how much time it's going to take to deliver into the lower environment and how to take that code been deployed into lower environment to the higher environment till production so navigation is also very important part in the devops then the third point is what all the course objectives right sorry let me i think i might have some highlight to here let me check uh, no that doesn't work okay Oh, okay. okay. So uh, the third thing is like course objective where we concentrate. So this is course being obviously implemented for to get the DevOps concept first in place and all about the agile practices in terms of uh, how do we create the code practice, how do we create the testing practice, how do we create the implementation and configuration management practice, and how do we deploy into a scalable infrastructures. Then we gonna see uh, first we create the basics and we gonna do the optimization of each and every process throughout the sections. So the second point talks about improve the workflow, communication feedback loops in the DevOps cycle. Third point is then build the reliance and automations by applying the DevOps in the enterprise environment. And the next is like obviously the critical success factors and key performance indicators. When I talked about all the monitoring tools, so this is the objective which you want to take when we cover the last section, which is the monitoring tool sections, which will gives you the success factor. Your environment is all time up or not. If something goes failure, how, what are the uh, ways you can recover it back? And how do you optimize either your infrastructure or application is performing up to mark or not? So that's will be as part of our lab last sections which will be monitoring sections and then who should be attending this course so obviously any individual and organizations who should be looking for foundation and a basic essential understanding of devops any employees and managers who are responsible for designing re-engineering or improve the existing manual process or any consultants guiding their clients in terms of what are the process which can improve the initiatives in the DevOps world, okay? Now, uh, as we uh, discuss about the agenda, so this is all about, I'll give you the quick glimpse about, this is what we gonna implement it, or what are, in, in couple of minutes, our demo is coming in place. So first we talked about what is DevOps, then we will, these are all the phases in DevOps world, right? We will talk about how the compile and deploy the code how do we install and configure Jenkins? What is GitHub, which is our source controlled? Then we'll talk about how Jenkins can integrate with GitHub and all other tools in market. Then we will talk about how do we automate the compile and packaging process using Jenkins. Then we will talk about continuous integrations and code analysis tools like SonarCube using Jenkins again. Then we will probably create an artifact of a code like suppose we use a java code and we wanted to deploy a web application into the production server so first we need to create the artifact so we will create a jar file okay whatever the code we push into github then we will deploy into remote random machines which is our dev machine suppose i have 10 i have 20 i have 30 machines in dev i have 40 machines in uat and i have 100 machines in Dev. So how do you manage separate deployment and state management 
throughout this deployment process so that also we we will cover and the last is like automate this deployment process across all these environments so that you will have zero touch automation process so this is exactly a flow which we're going to design it okay so any questions here guys okay i'll take that as no and i'll proceed ahead so let's start with what basically is a devops right so devops came with integration of two word called development and operations right so initially uh, before the devops in place we used to have separate teams or most of the company still have this uh, team structures called development team and it operations team so development team is a team who takes care of only the development where it team it operations team is a combination of testing team uh, deployment team and the monitoring team right so still in many organization you guys might have observed this team uh, different team expects and devops is one that which collaborates and minimize and almost uh, remove the gaps between development team and the it operations team so that the delivery and the acknowledgement would be faster okay so this is all about uh, devops as the word how it's been arrived okay let's talk about few about a one uh, probably one minute to two minutes about the history of the term called devops obviously so uh, we were knowing that uh, there was multiple conference going on in 2008 till 2010 and these are mostly the conference about agile world agile practices and agile uh, methodologies and in 2008 like andrew clay and uh, Debussy's discuss about the agile infrastructures where there was a most market demand about how do I create my scalable infrastructures and how do I automate the deployment in those infrastructures, right? So then that the term called DevOps was being popularized and it's been started in the market like 2009 in starting with Belgium where they first integrated the GitHub in the market right the first part of the devops was how I, I can manage the distributed version control system called github and initially we used to have centralized version control system called tfs uh, clear cache you might have heard svn right so these are all centralized version control system don't worry i'm going to discuss about what is centralized and what is distributed version control systems and there how uh, from then 2009 onwards there has been multiple devops conferences uh, in held in across the world. So I, I just mentioned that I have attended almost 50 plus uh, till now uh, all DevOps tools and specifically the automation sessions across the world. So but it has been started in 2009 itself. Then how do we use basically and currently what all the companies using their DevOps and why it is famous in the market so much, right? So let me first give you a few of the example why and what all the company are being having devops as their day-to-day -day activity and they give much more importance to devops and why so netflix right so netflix is most common and most famous in the market because of two things one as of their scalable infrastructure which they have hosted in aws and second thing is their automation of entire code and deployment and the faster deployment time right so any idea guys i just wanted to get an idea do you know how many automation engineer in netflix or devops engineer in netflix because i have gone i have attended some sessions in netflix so i have the brief rough idea about how many engineers so you you all guys must aware about netflix right for online streaming of videos and movies which we watch right krishna and lavanya yeah yes you see Okay, so just guess uh, about how much our DevOps engineer they could have Because Netflix is a worldwide they host their all the streaming data across worldwide not only in one countries so they might have, uh, Sorry Krishna your voice is not so they might to have 30 to 40 members of the team Great is this uh, Krishna or uh, Lavanya? Sorry Krishna Krishna, Alavanya, you guess? Uh, no idea, Sushil. So they currently have 10 to 11 members which manage the entire code uh, deployment till code production, 
deployment till monitoring expect and if anything goes failure they can recover that faster so only 10 devops engineer but they opted the devops practice in the starting real time and till now entire infrastructure code deployment code management scalable infrastructure being managed only by 10 devops engineer so that's their strength so that's the power of devops i wanted to discuss with you uh, so how they make that possible right your question will come right because uh, anyone can do the automation right but how do you know that what goes fail in the real world and the real time and how to recover from that so they have implementing something called chaos monkey if you might have heard so what sorry about it when i click from the mouse to highlight it goes to the next page sorry about it so chaos monkey is a service okay which goes to any of their lower environment you design where you want it it goes to production so for netflix they are designed for production environment so chaos monkey is a service what it does suppose you have five sets of server and every set of servers suppose they have 10 servers for set one 10 servers for set two and these are production hosting server right and they are all having load balancers so if the one goes down it doesn't worry load balancer will have the sessions stickiness sessions and the randomness session we can redirect the traffic to the other set of servers so this chaos monkey what it does anytime like suppose three o'clock in the morning two o'clock at twelve o'clock in the midnight they go randomly pick one set of server and make it down right it, it make it failure simply it make it failure it completely make some that this set of five servers will not work itself so that's the feature of chaos monkey it just bring down your one set of uh, servers in any environment so that how this devops engineer will get to know how to recover right and how to bring and create uh, sorry krishna here can you sushil here uh, sorry uh, krishna here yeah krishna. Uh, i just uh, can you repeat this uh, you know about the chaos monkey again uh, i lost it sure no problem so chaos monkey is a service okay what it does it gonna it randomly picks a uh, one set of server and terminates it or make it fail over okay so suppose you have five set of servers where a production environment is being hosted so uh, suppose how do you test that your infrastructure is always available so you can only test whenever there is a failover right so instead of waiting the actual failover in the production environment this chaos monkey randomly goes to the production environment around three o'clock two o'clock twelve o'clock in the midnight and randomly sets one set of server or make it failover then it is all about the devops engineer and their infrastructure how they have created so that it should automatically bring up the new set of instances and make it attached to the load balancers okay don't worry we're gonna when we create the entire infrastructure we'll talk about the uh, auto scaling groups the load balancers and uh, how you can create this immutable uh, infrastructure okay so that is how they test it okay is that is uh are you guys getting it yes sushi. yeah yeah yes, yes, sushi. okay so apart from netflix there are uh, these are top 10 companies which are so that as of now i think there are many companies you might have heard every company you go so there is a devops but in the rank right and and how do i fetch the rank so there is obviously a tech b bacon uh, link where you can go which i have mentioned here and they have listed all the top 10 companies and why they have listed in top 10 right so netflix facebook google walmart airbnb Flickr. so these are and uber especially right if if you read this blog i'll share with this all links to you or don't worry so you can see the specifications just like i discussed about netflix right why they are in rank uh, 1 to 10 because of the chaos monkey and the feature they have developed in their devops world and what all the automation suits they have created in their infrastructure creation and the automation part so just like netflix so there are amazon how they have implemented what all the best practices they have used and why they came up to that one to ten rank in the devops so this is one of the uh, one of the ten companies which are highly ranked in the devops best practices and you can read about more okay now let's talk about why devops why actually we need devops right so before devops in market we used to have a 
multiple business and technical perspectives in the delivery approaches right and which which are having multiple breaking points suppose in this ppt what you can see right so you can see before used to have an sdlc normal process right where customer provides what is their requirement right and customer uh, expects that they need something like fast for continuous innovations so that they can have the faster release cycle where right and the process would be like first we gather the requirement right once we gather the requirement we give it to the development team right but the only issues you can see there would be a gap right because this is a different person and this is a different person right we've never given an opportunity to the development team to directly interact with the customer feedbacks right because there is always be a requirement gathering guy uh, probably the analyst or, or the bi as one of you are hosting it right so developer the, there is always we consider a gap right what we develop it's all about what they get from the uh, requirement phase so there is always a gap so whatever the requirement they get get so they create their own development software or development process and then it operations comes in place right so you can again see these are the different teams okay so it operations also have got three sections one is like whenever the package been created by development team there is a deployment team who deploy this package then pass it to the testing team right then testing team test it and then it um, uh, pass it to the monitoring team or post uh, validation teams who monitors the infrastructure and the package you deployed are they expected as per expect, uh, expectations or not right and the feedback if anything goes wrong right many of the time you you guys must have seen in the previously that if the testing something goes wrong and the testing team to give feedback to the developer it takes one day of time and again there is a conversation what goes wrong how to implement it right then how developer can quickly interact with the testing guy these are all basically the gaps in the real world has been analyzed so the, how to minimize these gaps right and these are the big technical challenges become in uh, 2010 right so to discuss about and to address all this delivery challenges like how do i automate and minimize the gap in all these different phases and to address this obviously the devops came in market right there was the process called agile but these are all theoretical process or our waterfall model we know that these are the agile process but how to implement it and devops in the real world if i want to say this is exact implementation of all the agile methodologies okay so how do exactly you go and minimize or do the automation end-to-end -end automation across all these different phases right so first obviously the devops the main uh, addressing point it it has to address the gap between the dev testing and ops team it has to automate the entire release cycle so release cycle it means how do you deploy your code first into dev how do you promote it to uat and then how do you promote it after validation into uat till production right then in that entire cycle you should must and definitely should have functional and non-functional test cases plus operational and business readiness we're going to discuss more about that and this process obviously intensify the reusability and automation so obviously if you create kind of the automation template and for one project for any number of projects you are onboarding and if suppose you are the devops guy so suppose you have delivered one end-to-end -end automation for one project so for you to onboard any other project would be more flexible so you gonna only concentrate about optimization of the current process where the project team will get lesser time that and they will be very happy that within a couple of days you have implemented end-to-end -end journey right and for you since you have already done before you just need to concentrate about optimization spot to it right so this is about what devops done now the advantage what would be the advantage of this right so obviously this gap you can see this gap you're gonna remove using the devops world where the deployment and test you're gonna create a feedback loop right and from so this is all the loop you're gonna create at the end you're gonna reduce the risk you're gonna improve the quality because you are subsequently deploying your code faster than the previous days right and then reduce the cost 
obviously because you gonna have a flexible environment you don't need now hundreds of development machines where developer has to test now you with this automation you can have one single build box we're gonna see all this where dev all developer can collaborate each other and they can get faster delivery uh, feedback that are their code is deployable and buildable or not simply so that's the uh, infrastructure and automation pipeline you're gonna create right so that's about what devops can do right and why devops in market now as you said right uh, as as krishna mentioned that he he wants to get what all exposure in terms of what all the tools in the market and what all the best tools in all the aspects because there are 100 to 200 plus tools in the market so let's have a glimpse about what all the tools and what all the areas about these tools in the market sure okay so before we jump into uh, directly into the set of tools let's discuss about uh, what is waterfall then it came agile and then it there is a uh, uh, word came called continuous integration and continuous delivery right so what was the waterfall model right so most of you are already aware about that so waterfall model is nothing is about it talks about the feature complete deployment process so what does that mean called feature complete deployment process right so as you say i have mentioned here so it is a term and it's kind of standard given to the delivery team that whenever my entire product is ready or the entire development is ready then i have to deploy this feature into the production or in in real world a team should only start marketing its software ready for release when all the functionality of a release been developed so you are getting it right so suppose client came with one product and in that one product he need 10 features so the waterfall model talks about first you develop all 10 features then you start marketing and selling it back to the client that yes your product is ready so that's about waterfall model and it also talks about you should for test it then deploy it and then promote it to the higher environment that is common across all the three but agile model right so agile model uh, depicts like why do I want and wait for all 10 features right why can't I deliver one feature at one time and make my delivery cycle faster enough and error prone enough because what happens if you entirely develop 10 feature and give it to the client client will come up that in one feature I've got these issues in second feature I have got these issues then there would be again a difficulties to prioritize which uh, issues or bugs to prioritize it right so that's why agile model came in place so where they introduce an idea to the team that they should get their software ready for every release throughout the development so suppose they thought about 10 releases that after 10 releases i will deliver my product so they split every releases and give this every releases periodically to the client and to test it suppose they'll give beta versions with feature 2 then they will give beta version 2 with a feature 4 so they'll test it they'll come back and if there is any issues they'll try to uh, uh, develop accomplish in the next uh, beta release right so that's called agile model now next come called continuous delivery model right where they told about why still i need for the entire release uh, if there are 10 features so i need to wait for entire release why i can't still uh, create kind of modular approach right or a subsequent uh, phases of this release and I start to deliver it faster it means whenever a developer commits a code right why can't i test the code at that time and make sure whatever the feature he has developed it should be ready and if there is any fail it should directly acknowledge back to that developer specific to that developer that this code what you have developed it doesn't fit with the entire code set so you go and you do the change and again do the recommit so now you analyze right what is the faster delivery and development process is that make sense to both of you krishna lavanya yes sir yes sir yes sir great so this is very important guys to understand uh, uh, what is waterfall model what is agile model and what is continuous delivery because going forward you guys if you are seeking your career path in the devops world so that is very important to understand what was as is in terms of manual approach and what is to be what you gonna propose so you gonna propose only on the analysis which you have done on the as is process 
is that make sense yes yes great so let's talk about uh, the multiple phases of the software product in the devops world so, okay so basically there are five sets but obviously there are add-ons after these five sets like monitoring expect security expect uh, automation expect and there are monitorly containerization expect so i'll talk about all those add-on parts later so main pillars so there are five different main pillars in the devops world one is the develop your code second one the code is develop how are you compiling it once the code is compiled how are you testing it right so that you can make sure your code is compilable and buildable once the testing is complete what all the ways you are packaging it your entire compiled uh, source code and the last phase how flexible you are you to deploy your package into all the environments right so these are multiple five phases and there are set of tools which been divided into development code section compilation section test section package section and deploy sections so if i'll give you a rough ideas so all these five sections have got 50 plus tools in individual sections and there is a rank on this tool based on the international devops uh, uh, meetups and uh, there are multiple conferences happens i'm going to talk about that as well right so let's talk about few things about what is code build test package release and monitor sections so code section so code section or code process is the process where developer develops the code review what he has done then he has pushed this code to a centralized code repository so that all the developers can collaborate each other and they can merge their code build section which talks about once the code is ready how they do build their code right and generate the status of their code test is like every functionality what they have wrote in that code are they written uh, corresponding test functions or not and are they testing completely those te test functions or not right so there would be going forward there is no manual testing team is required you might have heard about selenium qtp right automation test why these automation test because these automation test tools automatically test each functions of your entire software and analyze are these functions meeting the expectations of this function or not we will you will more visualize when we develop a code create a test cases test it and generate a report for now i'm just mentioning as a comment so that you will understand it okay then the next phase is a package so once my code is obviously test and compiled i get a if it is a dotnet i'll get dlls or i get exes if it is a java i'll get class files but i can't individually deploy this class files i need to package it right so in java you have heard about jar file war file or er file so i need to deploy into some web container like apache tomcat right so how how do i package it first so there are multiple tools called build tools if it is a java you might have heard about ant maven and gradle if it is a dotnet there is a ms build and wix packaging tool if it is a android and ios there is a specific i android builder and ios builder tool so i'll cover few of them okay the idea is, is very same if you know the idea right all this code compile test package then that is what the devops talks about you just need to explore more about the project requirement if one project is written in java so how do you generate all these phases and what all the tools you will use which will best suit their project requirements so that's the mindset you need to have and that's why i'm more focusing about uh, these things right because based on the seven year of experience what i had implemented more than 50 plus projects and delivered into production this is the main idea you should set in your brain that it doesn't matter you know because as of now you heard about these guys are java developer these guys are dotnet developer these are the android developer but you going forward why you gonna have the devops guys and a cloud engineer having most demand in the market because you gonna have the expertise in all set of tools not one you gonna have more than 20 30 50 set of tools always you need to have up to date in the market what is new tools or what is new technologies coming in the market which can ease your task and when you think about easy your task so these are your seven set of tasks right which is code build test package release configure and monitor so next is 
uh, release so once your package is ready so how do you release this package across all the different environments like dev uat and production and there are multiple process involved right like dev only developer can deploy in test uh, there would be automation test uh, approval process which is required but for prod only it leads or only directors or only managers can deploy so there would be one authentication process and that you also gonna develop as a uh, automation process so whenever your code is promoted to uat automatic alert should go to you define whom to go either it's a lead manager or director so that they have to approve before going into production so that's the exact pipeline we're gonna create okay then the next phase about configure then how do you configure your infrastructure we will talk more about when we discuss about aws and last part which is obviously the monitoring where are different section i as i discussed application performance user experience security expects and the infrastructure monitoring so this is all about the devops life cycle okay and this is what we're going to discuss throughout this session but in a hands-on way okay any questions guys or I'll move forward. Yeah, no, Shishil, you can move forward. Great. Uh, Shishil, one quick question. Yes, please. Krishna here. Uh, yeah, so Krishna. normally, so what are the areas like? Uh, see, uh, I heard that you know, build and release manager, DevOps admin, or uh, developer. So so many designations as such, right? I mean, yes. what is the difference for all these things? Like, who will take care of the admin part? Who will take care of the development and all? correct so being so it is all like company standards okay company so every company you go you have seen about they follow the levels of uh, hiring right there will be devops uh, level then is a senior devops guy then is a devops administrator so it's all about they have created the rank but for you you had to concentrate about as a devops engineer based on your seniority based on your the year of experience every company will give you a different post as you ask the difference okay so uh, if you few of the company when i heard and i had experience when i was uh, giving the sessions across multiple industry so many company came up nowadays called devops administrator role okay where you will only gonna concentrate about setting up all and managing it to the enterprise level suppose jenkins one example so on how the jenkins should have higher availability so you will get two big servers so from installation to configuration and configuring the pipelines and the plugins so it is the job of uh, devops admin then just like that there will be whatever the devops tool like github how to install how to configure how to manage the user access across all the individuals so this is mostly the job of devops administrator but i would say this is <clears throat> not a very flexible job okay try to find out and this is only few companies will have if you say any standard company they will clearly ask you that he or they needs devops engineer and as a devops engineer you have to take care of installation of software configuration of your software creation or using as a user okay so you will create the entire automation pipeline where any developer can use it and any project can implement it and you're gonna optimize and create specific to all the project requirements is that make sense yes sir. thank you oh great yes so uh, we talked about the phases of devops now let's think about and talk about what all the sets of tools comes in all those phases right so i have created a groups for better understanding right once you because you go in the market and talk about i need to learn devops so you will get hundreds of tool pitch into your uh, front of you that these are the tools now you start learning one of them but that is not the right way of learning right the right way of learning when i'm starting from phase one i'm uh, concentrating is like first you group it right that's why i talked about all these phases right all these phases called code build test compile test package and deploy so these are all the groups and all groups has got set of tools again these set of tools got priority of tools which is currently being used in the market right so that's how you should jump into the devops world and start the learning phase right so this is the group i've created so these are 
one is like source control management continuous integration configuration management inspection continuous delivery and containerizations so these are the multiple set of groups where there are 10 or 50 plus tools are there and they are divided into particular ranks so i'm going to discuss about that right so so this is one of uh, the good periodic so you you in in our childhood we all have seen the chemistry periodic table right so we also have periodic table for devops tool right good sounds good right let's see that let me quickly copy this and let me show you how does this that and how do we So let me know guys once it is visible to everyone is it visible the screen is visible to everyone yes sir. great so this is a very good uh, perspective in terms of the rank way and the multiple sections of it right so we discussed about source control right you have seen the source control which is the first group i've talked about right which is called source control management right so if you just mouse over here right so it will start highlighting on your left you can see the yellow it is being highlighted right so we are going to talk about all these five phases of devops so one is the obviously the sem which i have already discussed called source control management right this is the tool or uh, enterprise tool where uh, how devops push their code to a centralized code system and this is called version control system so the mainly uh, as of now in most of the industry across world the famous are the rank one is github the second is git which comes without ui the third one is bitbucket okay second phase comes our ci okay which is continue continuous integration tools so you can see the rank in that continuous integration the blue one you can see jenkins is on top one okay again when i show git right so you can click here and this will tell you what is github and how what all the integration it provides so all detail you have so don't worry i'm gonna cover all of this so just to assure you i'm just okay so we were talking about continuous integrations tool so how i picked up the tool for this session that's why i wanted to show you so that always the rank tool you will start learning it first because you can see right if you only see this flow there are 90 plus tools and if you start sitting and learning everyone suggests everything but think about the rank and most of the what all the top 10 companies in the devops like amazon netflix are they using right so based on that we have to go with the sessions okay so on the ci tool i have opted for jenkins right but there are other alternatives few of the companies are using bombo and uh, travis is now not been used and it was been uh, popular in four or five years back but now jenkins and its enterprise version called cloud bees jenkins are very famous and almost 80 percent of industries is using it right now next talk about uh deployment is not cloud we will so cloud again okay? so cloud uh, again as this is even though only a devops session but i'm focusing so that you will get a glimpse of cloud because what is happening two years back uh, when when you ask or any opening or any reference for devops they would not ask for cloud but if you are applying anywhere or if you wanted to have a career in a devops right so cloud comes in default because platform so nobody 
going forward they need on-prem platform because it's there are multiple challenges to it but since we you need a flexible environment a scalable environment with a cost effective approach people are migrating to cloud at very fast pace right and in that public cloud there are very uh, known uh, public clouds aws which is again you can see which is in top notch okay then there is azure then is a google cloud okay there are other clouds also called rackspace open steps so these are private clouds right then open shift right so we will talk about and do the entire lab in the AWS. So along with this DevOps session, you will get expertise on or the basic information on the how cloud works. So that will not be unknown for uh, when you talk about the DevOps world. So that's why that is the point I put that the entire lab. So before this uh, session or before I think six, seven sessions before everything we used to do in Oracle VM, you might have aware about Oracle hypervisor type right on the local machine windows machine hypervisor Oracle VM and vagrant So now forward uh, I would still suggest to go with AWS But if you have got like uh, things to know on uh, Oracle VM and vagrant Then I can move back and do the entire lab on uh, vagrant or, or uh, Oracle VM both so let me know your suggestions and probably we can take that call uh, Sushil then, uh, This is Suresh this uh, so uh, better if we go with the AWS because the industry is uh, demanding that and uh, they will uh, experience and they will learn parallelly and uh, That would be advantage for them as well. They can experience it parallelly great Yes, so that's why I have put everything designed in the AWS Yes, so from day one from yes. before our setting up the lab one everything yes. would be set up on AWS and yes. We will be using AWS. Yes, so for this uh, as a prerequisite you inform them right uh, so um, you need a credit card information. Yes, so be yes. Uh, ready with that Yes, guys. So yeah. uh, yes, so I'll discuss about once yeah. we cover yeah. about yeah. all this. So first thing yeah. uh, we okay. need a, a credit card. Okay. So I'm gonna discuss about this on the prerequisite sites. Uh, next, come with our. Let me talk about so uh, repo management. So repo management, if you're using, so I'll talk about the Docker Hub, obviously. Then next important things comes about configuration management, right? So configuration management, there are three tools mostly in market called Chef, Puppet, and Ansible, right? Which is gray in color, so that's why it has not been highlighted more. So this is all this, like you can see that Ansible, Puppet, and Chef, right? So I'm mostly talking about Ansible and Chef and having all our labs in Ansible because all of our US and UK based industries are going for Ansible. Why? I'm still gonna talk about both right when i'm discussing about pros and cons and uh next is a few of the log monitoring then yes when you say again you have heard about the pack yeah so what is this docker for i'll talk about so docker is a containerization tool when you see the containerization so docker is a containerization tool so in the devops area and the common development phases there is you might have heard about microservices right most of you are aware about this term and at least heard in the market called microservices right so microservices is still if i'm designing my three tier architecture called ui api and database so initially people has to deploy ui application and api application now ui application is still now they split into layered approach right and how they split into layered approach using these tools called docker so docker gives you the strength of deploying same state and achieving same state across any environment irregardless of operating system so docker creates an image which is very lightweight and if you deploy in suppose any variant of unix called solaris ubuntu or any variant of linux called uh, red hat or centos it doesn't matter and you doesn't need to do any other configurations so you just need to deploy this docker images create a container that's all you will have your application up and running same which is running across any other operating system it will 100 percent gives you the same state regardless of you run wherever so that's the power of docker so if time permits we will talk about docker and probably i'll try to show you the working model of docker as well right because this uh, this is a separate talks as well and docker needs more under understanding 
because docker itself come up with 10 plus tool docker engine docker container docker swarm docker compose and kubernetes okay but i'll give you a rough idea at the end of the time permit so don't worry about it so this is one of the containerization tool okay so these are all the sections if you remember uh, the ppt which we were going okay right so this containerizations come in that uh, uh, stage or the group right we talk about source control where githubs comes in first we talk about configuration uh, integration where jenkins comes first configuration management where chef come first continuous in inspections where sonar cube come first continuous delivery where ansible comes first and containerizations like docker come first so that's how we should think about learning going forward learning into the devops market right then there is a build tool so i talked about if you're using java then maven is a top notch so i'll be using maven okay maven and gradle first two and first three in the market based on the ranking and if you have some specific demands like for dotnet is ims build i already talked about right for dotnet is maven uh, gradle and ant then for android or os there is a different different build tools but we will take one as a generic one okay and then we will discuss about few of the log monitoring tools and other aspects to that so is that make sense guys how we have designed yeah. the lab sessions yeah if I have the knowledge of any one tool, can I explore the other tools as well? I mean, see, each company differ. I mean, use the different different tools, right? Yes. So, can I explore the other tool? So, if I have yes. the knowledge of one. Yes, definitely. So that's the idea you need to have. That's the idea I wanted to pitch in, right? So you should never think about this tool knowledge. Okay, what you have to have in your mind is this. Let me show you what. is this right so wherever the project goes because in the same company if you are going with a two project team one project team is using java one project team is using dotnet right and you are the devops guys because you are language uh, independent you will get requirement for any project type any language so if it is a java then you have to use build tool as a maven if it is a dotnet you have to use build tool as a uh, ms build or wix and this is usually the development team use you just need to integrate that right but if you know the idea on one tool it is 100 percent same across any other tool you just like you have to do configuration tweaking okay? okay so that's why i'm talking about and you will see that don't worry you will see that when i'm talking about suppose any of the configuration management tool like ansible and i'll correlate with chef so both thing i'll try to correlate and you will see there are 100 percent similarity between both two only thing differs is like ansible is written in python and uh, chef is written in ruby only syntax differs okay but the execution flow writing the flows writing the modules writing the playbooks or cookbooks are all same so these are the expectives of uh, chef and ansible which i'm talking about but i'll try to simulate across this uh, training module right so the you need to grab the idea the main thing i'm concentrating okay and with having some practical sessions you will obviously have the hands-on as well so you will have both things going forward and you are entirely ready to go and opt for devops role right so don't worry about all these tools that's why i'm saying there are hundreds of tools and i've shown you there are hundreds of tools 90 yeah. here and if you scroll down there are 120 tools only in this rank but there are other open source as well and many company develops their own tool so you can keep adding it so you don't need to grab all that idea what you need to grab how do you implement and integrate in the automation world that's it right and so uh, main... how about the python uh, how about python so what level uh, uh, we need to be that's the same thing i'm talking about so don't worry about you 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 not going to be a python developer you're not going to be a ruby developer docker is written in go so you don't going to be on the go lang right so you okay. are the automation engineer i'm always focusing it you need to know how to write modules okay so all this like ruby uh, ansible chef it comes with a key and value key management files right or configuration files where you need to know how and what key and value you have to put so that it will give you the desired task right we talked okay. about suppose an example i'll tell you 
uh, to host a simple web application, right? You so developer team will suppose give you a jar file. You need to host in a web server, and in that web server, first you need to make sure that you have any web container running. Suppose Apache Tomcat. Then second step, you need to copy this war file. Third step, you need to change the configuration file like which port you need to host your application then fourth is like restart the application and fifth is like test it so first you prioritize and uh, prioritize the step and sequ sequentialize the step the next step how do you achieve this task one way obviously you can do auto manual way right you can do this this and you can achieve the task main thing is like automation so in that automation how do you write these steps using automation tools like chef or ansible so that is the more concentration and these tools come up with all user friendly key value pairs you define the step that is step one you need to install the web container step two you need to deploy your code third step you need to restart the service and you are done and next time developer gives you 100 package you just one click it will go deploy at one click so that's the power of devops and automation in place right okay Okay, great. So uh, let me show you. Great. So before let me before going to the demo, let I wanted to show you the architecture which we are going to implement, right? Which will kind of give you a glimpse of uh, what we're gonna do. Okay. So is it visible? The screen is it fit to everyone? yeah everyone's a screen okay great so let me first explain uh, you what is this gen yeah anyone have any question you, can, yeah can you i mean a little bit zoom i mean can i'll zoom it out? i think it if i zoom it it will not fit don't worry i'll keep scrolling out here and there i'm i'm just okay. just opened it so uh this is uh a one ci flow and this is most standard and most generic ci flow which i have developed in last seven years okay and every language till now I have used in Java, I have used across .NET, iOS, Android, Node.js, right, Ruby. Same idea has been implemented across everywhere. Only differs is your tool. But Jenkins is always remain same. GitHub Bitbucket always remain same. And CI flow is always remain same, okay? So we have discussed so how to correlate. So that's why the correlation is very necessary. Right, so we discussed about this code, right? Code, develop the code, compile the code, test the code, package the code, and then deploy it, right? That is what the architecture talks about, okay? So starting from your left-hand side, okay? So this is a developer, okay? So developer usually do the development and push it to their one of the GitHub, okay? I'll talk about Jira. So Jira is a sprint management tool. So an ID, ID, you know, it's a local development software. So for Java, it is an IntelliJ or Eclipse. For .NET, you might have heard about Visual Studio, right? So this is their developer. And we also, till now, we also done this automation, but it is not required. I'm just giving you a glimpse of that, okay? So that you will know what is the strength of automation till now, till today, what we have achieved in the market, right? So what usually developer do so this is a developer he usually so there are don't think about one developer think about 100 developers sitting across 10 different countries and they do development at same time right so developer do and create and merge their code to the central repository system called github or bitbucket okay so whenever the separate developer do their code development so they usually raise a pr request i'll talk about all this when you are aware about what is github how the source controlled works right so just now try to understand the flow okay so suppose okay so there are 100 lines of code so he just wrote 10 lines of one function he tested it and then he pushed it to the main repository where your entire production code sits right but you doesn't want your production code to have a new code without being tested, right? It's that the my uh, process should be. So before it merge, what happens? A developer raise a request that I need my code to merge into GitHub where my production code is sitting. So before GitHub merge its code, it, it triggers an alarm to Jenkins automatically, 
it's all about configuration which we are going to do using plugins called webhook plugin so then jenkins take this call and tells back uh, github in the normal way that you wait let me test what this particular developer has developed let me test this code compile this code deploy this code and if everything looks good to me then i'll acknowledge you back that yes this code is ready to get it deployed into your production code and then github goes and merge this code right and after this merge you promote to the higher environments so that the normal flow so now let's discuss it in detail okay okay so the first step whenever developer raise a request that i want my pull request to get it merged github sends an acknowledgement back to the jenkins right so jenkins these are the separate jobs we create okay so krishna ji you are about jenkins right yeah so you must be aware <laughs> about yeah so you must be aware about the jobs we create the separate separate jobs and we integrate it right correct right so these are the kind of jobs we create so first is usually this is the generic name right you can change anything which you see in here but this is the best practice which i have implemented here for you so that you can understand and try to implement same wherever you go so first is usually a prechecks right where you gonna get how jenkins will pull the base code from the production code set and the modified code from the specific developer so he will have the main code plus the modified code and you know this is the central build machine so uh, if there are 100 developers i'm not using 100 machines so that's how the first point you are saving the cost and effort so one place you can get the acknowledgement and send back the acknowledgement from one place so so the tester doesn't has to interact with 100 developers so that's how from step one you are trying to minimize the cost you are trying to set up a centralized system and you are trying to set up the common feedback loop okay that we are going to see so every code so jenkins will pull the base code plus the modified code into a central build box okay it could be linux it could be windows doesn't matter and you design on the jenkins what steps or task it has to do so first step it has to clone the repository so obviously it will take the base code and modified code now you also have to take care of the failover scenario what happens that while pulling the code from the remote repository like github it has failed in between due to network issues due to latency issues so you have to also have some alarming system enabled so jenkins also support called email acknowledgement uh, push notifications right so i'm going to talk about and configure in that lab called email email acknowledgement okay Give me a moment. Yeah. So if that step fails, okay. So one email will be triggered to that specific developer that while doing the step one, the clone is failed, and you will mark this build failed, right? So no need to go to any other further step. If the step one or the step first or the job one is passed, it will go to the next job called compiled. What I have shown you in here called compile process right so there it will do certain task so first it will create a specific directory where it will copy whatever the code it has got then it will run all this step right so first it will clean the directory it will compile the code then it will test the code using j, j unit so j unit is again a testing framework which can test all your test functions written by uh, developer so it's your responsibility to integrate that as a devops engineer right so you define all those like how to compile it what to compile it how to test it what to test it then once the test is passed you need to build the code and after the code is built you need to generate an artifact right you have seen that test it and package it right we are doing it here so we are compiling it we are testing it we are building it and we are creating a package so i'm just giving an example here we are creating a war file and in any of the step it if it got fails so again it has to mark the build as failed and send an email alert back that your step 
has been failed and you have to also take care of cleaning the directory if the step is failed you do not need to maintain the folder or the directory which you have created otherwise you will bummed up bummed up to your jenkins build box having your unnecessary code all the time so you do your task then clean up the repository or clean up the build box so that you will not have space issues or the performance issues on the jenkins machine so that's the idea you have to think about okay Obviously, this is not required, but as part of the maturity and down the line, you will get to know that these are also required. So from day one, I'm trying to push this thing so that as part of the best practice and the standard practice, you will try to get this implemented wherever you go, right? The ne next part is like code inspection, right? So one of the famous tool is called SonarCube, right? So what it does, so you have generated the test uh, test cases right so suppose developer has developer is a smart right so he will tell you that i have written 10 functions and i have written uh, 10 cases test cases and your step is being passed here because you are just testing all the test cases has passed but down the line your manager if something goes fail down the line someone come to you and say that what is the code coverage what is the test coverage so, so suppose developer is a smart he has written 10 function but he has written only three test cases specific to three function and he has left two functions he, he has not written test cases so how do you you analyze so instead of use it there are many good tools called sonar cube which generates the report like first if there are 10 functions, then there should and there must be a 10 uh, test cases must be written, right? And out of 10 test cases, how many are passed? So if there are seven are passed, you can pass your build. If there are 50% passing rate, you can mark your fail. So eligibility gates, all this code coverage you can see, right? Generates, do the static code analysis, uh, do the J unit test report and create a quality gates right so as a devops engineer when you go explore the market so that is the you'll get that you need to tell developers because you are the main person in entire uh, uh, creation and delivery of the software sdlc process right so you are the one who gathers the requirement you are the one who instruct the developer that this is the requirement this is how it should be developed you are the one who integrate the entire automation test suite and you are the one who creates the infrastructure right then you are also responsibility take the responsibility that how developers also creating the code so standards giving just an example I, I give my developer that one function should not should not contain more than 50 lines of code right if it is containing 51 line it should not be marked as a standard so how do you analyze that and create any such standard so again sonar gives that a static code analysis right another standard that every function should have comment associated to it right so these are all the best practices and standards you can define in sonar cube and if it is fail again you can give the email back and the very last step is your deployment step right so suppose your step is passed right sorry it is not fully accessible let me bring back here yeah. okay so the very last step is like upload to a centralized artifact storage okay <clears throat> and then do the deployment from that storage now you will ask why do i need uh, artifact storage since i already have github where my source code is getting uh, stored i why can't i use that now again as a standard as a industry standard none of the artifacts which you generate artifacts are the deployment package which you generate should go to the source code repository it should be stored in the industry standard uh, artifact storage like nexus and artifactory so that's why whatever i have generated the war file i am storing getting the jar file and storing into nexus with a proper nomenclature that this jar file called named as a version one it has been marked to be deployed to dev then if there is a next artifact it should be version 1.2 so that's how i i am tracking each and every step what i'm deploying where i'm deploying and what time i'm deploying so that in case of any trace back i'll within a second i should get back what version is got failed in what environment and at what time so you are getting the power right every step is has got the automation and the logic behind it so once I uh, upload the code into Nexus, I'll so that's my task is done, right? 
now i can send the acknowledgement back from here to the github that this code is compiled fine build fine and we have created it now you can go and merge it into the master branch which is your production branch and you can tag it like what version this developer has generated this new code so you can mark this every iterative version of that code right and again if this is any failed it will go back and acknowledge it so this is only the ci process model okay okay session let me open sorry it's not coming full screen since it was written in visio so yeah so this is how we do right so any questions guys any understanding or uh, is that makes sense i know the, for day one it is quite lengthy but i just wanted to give you a glimpse this is how the course been designed it is not only designed as a theoretical expert it is all been designed in terms of hands on and things about thinking in a mind that you are going to be as a devops engineer or cloud engineer or automation engineer and what all the tools and technologies you should think about learning from day one if you're thinking about devops as a career right so any questions guys about this uh, flow this is only ci flow i'm not at all talking about the deployment flow okay because if i'll talk now it will be like more uh, on onto the devops world so don't worry i'll talk about cd flow as well this is all about ci flow so any questions yeah, any sorry. step no questions from my and uh, sushil great okay so with that case let's uh, go and see our demo first so we were here the next is like creation of aws account and the process yes first so let's so what all the step you have seen okay so i have recorded a video doing the same step whatever the diagram you are seeing or the flow you are seeing on the screen the same end to end step i have created and recorded a video <clears throat> in the morning today so let's see how does that work and entire our lab this is just a 50% okay i'm again telling this is not at all covering the ansible and configuration management and the monitoring tools or the container or aws this is just a standard ci process which is very important so you heard about the term called ci cd in devops right so ci is meant continuous integration and cd is called continuous delivery so continuous integrations comes first and then delivery and deployments comes next so once you have your code ready then only you can navigate and propagate your code from lower environment to a higher environment having additional steps like functional and non-functional uh, test included so that we're going to talk about in the later step understanding on each and every step is required but you have seen right i'll tell you the the entire idea this was the real demo okay which which was a real development which has been done and deployed into nexus you have seen the timestamp it has took mostly two minutes right for one code to get uh, developed and get it deployed it took two to three minutes right think about when the devops was not there and think about once the developer has to develop a code he has to drop a mail to a testing team testing team do the test he has to do the drop a mail to the deployment team he will get the requirement he will take another day so seven to six days of deployment now we are doing in hours and minutes amazon does the deployment of every code every second if you read about their devops why they are in rank two for now because their every commits is getting deployed every second every second there is a new change in production and there is no intermediator in so developers just push the code and with the devops engineer infrastructure automation tool set and the architecture he has done it gets deployed to real production environment within a second and their frequency is every one second not minute every second there is a new set of code getting deployed into amazon so that's fast they are into that as of now what i have shown it taking two to three minutes but yes when you get the expertise when you get the optimization you can still minimize this code so now running the seven days of deployment and release cycle you are doing in one day or two day so that's the power of devops i wanted to present is that make sense guys to everyone excellent social
yeah so okay. don't worry about i know it is Social, this is very complex so yes Suresh. Uh, I'm a bit surprised like Amazon how it is implementing within uh, every second it is deploying to the directly to the uh, to the production, production. and uh, without having any intermittent uh, environments that too is a, it's a yes. very challenging right so what is the key yes. factor there in in a nutshell yes so Amazon came up with a microservices approach okay which uh, having containerized approach okay so you heard about docker right yes so docker is so you know with one every time they build a code it generates an image and that image you deploy one shot in three environments and it makes sure it doesn't it doesn't require that now with a docker you doesn't even need the dev environment UAT. The, the deployment pipeline there will be two jobs one called lower deployment one called production deployment in lower deployment they just create a container and from one image to create a container it takes hardly milliseconds not even seconds if you have used docker you create 10 containers fire one command it contains 10 uh, ui containers it means 10 it is creating 10 tomcat having your application up and running in milliseconds i'm asking about 10 Amazon for test you just need one so in millisecond it has created one Tomcat Apache suppose I'm just giving web container they already have got their application deployed because they have created the image now what they do they just test they'll just hit couple of uh, load test and a performance test which is again automated using selenium and QTP and again they'll quickly move it to the production that's how it done so that's the power of uh, modular and containerization approach so they are using much more technologies into that right so they have okay. got ai now yeah, involved into that so uh, if we get a chance to implement like that the, that's a good opportunity yes so uh, yeah that that's all about so devops krishna, and exploring it uh, krishna yes here. Yeah, so krishna. they run this uh, they run this framework in all these three environments right dev qa and finally prod right no for them is uh, only lower environment and production environment so don't worry about amazon so amazon okay. is obviously 10 level in up general, because, in general yes in general we have all this let me show you in general we have a uh, dev we have test we have uat and we have production so 90 percent of organization which either you are working or you will go they will be using all this environment i'll tell you why dev environment is the environment when developer do every commit and get it deployed like in day 100 deployment happens in a dev environment right now why you need 10 test environment because test environment you have got test shoots which takes hours to complete right so dev environment if you have done 100 deployments only 20 deployments in one day will get tested in te test environment now you will have uat environment out of that 20 which has got deployed you will test only one in uat environment where you are gonna do two days of load testing performance testing and non-functional testing right so that's conclude this is uat is your production ready environment so it is just like replica of your production where you do all your load test performance test and non-functional test which is one environment of one version if uat is passed then that version goes to production okay so that's the flow and don't worry we will create the same flow what i'm giving you the idea about netflix and amazon works that they are like level 10 where they are using container approach but normal in our day-to-day -day activity all of the in, in the uh, uh, standard industries are using all this set of environment at least three to four environment for sure like dev test pre-prod or dev test uat pre-prod and production 